Hello again. It's tenon time. Now this particular project is one that there's several ways to accomplish it and I'm going to do the one that can be copied by the most people and I'll explain that when you see what the problem is. This is a nice pipe. It's a Dunhill and really outstanding condition. I'm not even sure it's been, uh, no, it has never been smoked. It's brand new. However, the tenon she no fits, and I mean grossly so. It's slightly crooked. The uh, end of the tenon is crooked. It's, if you measure this at one end, it's, uh, Let's see here, 358, and if you go down toward the base of it, it's 353. So there's five thousandths of an inch of flare to it, trumpet flare. And the end of it, the end of the tenon is no longer square to the airway. And what I think happened here, my best guess, is that this sat in a cabinet waiting to be sold for years and it got a little dry and it became loose and uh, the uh, owner thought well not a problem might even even been the shopkeeper I don't know that said well I've heard that you can wave the tenon over like a lighter flame for a little while and then push it down on a countertop, something smooth and hard, and that that'll expand the material. And I strongly encourage people to not do that. That's not to say that there it hasn't been done successfully at least once in history. It probably has, but it is without a doubt something that sounds better than it works. Uh, and this would be a perfect example. Now, this gentleman, whoever, uh, the, the guy who sent me this pipe, uh, ended up having to ship it interstate. I mean, you know, to just get a, such a simple problem fixed. Because once this fit goes haywire, you've got yourself a, a bit of work and uh, you can wreck it. It's not difficult at all if you start monkeying with the fit. Uh, we're down into thousands of an inch and it doesn't take much to screw it up and there's no rewind button. So first order of business is to see if we're working with a square mortise and that's done with a pin gauge. I pre-selected it by just going down the line there one thousandth of an inch apart a set between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch will get you what you want, but that's 250 of them, so be prepared for sticker shock. And you get that to bottom and see if you get any waggle, and there is not. So the mortise of this pipe is not a problem. We can just leave it alone. Had it been out of shape in some way, then we take one of these guys that you've seen these before on my videos. They're chucking reamers and you put them into a hole and they cut the sides instead of the end. And that's how you re-true a cylindrical hole. But we don't need to do that. The next order of business is similar in that it's like a pin gauge set except you're going to have to make one of these yourself. These are drill rods available from McMaster Carr and to put together a set you're going to have to mix fractionals and numbered and decimal and just choose them according to their diameter in thousandths of an inch and start with about 0 0.120 and go up to where we go here around 158 is my largest one and it'll work for pretty much anything you need to do when it comes to tenon expansion 
which we'll talk about later, but this set cannot be purchased as is. It's quite inexpensive. These drill rods are only a buck or two a piece. Uh, they're hardened. You do need to grind a little taper on the end of them so that the shoulder doesn't catch. They're, they're uh, laser cut, sharp as a razor, and will they won't go into holes because they cut. So you want to put a little grind on there. Just chuck them in a drill and buzz them against some sandpaper and you're good to go. But you make a set like this one time and it's good for life. So choose the one of these that's the tightest one that will still fit and then you're within a thousandth of an inch or so. And we're checking to see if this is still straight, if the tenon has been bent in relation to the face of the uh, stem here and it looks we lucked out that is a, a, a good straight fit it looks straight when you uh, uh, do this kind of a deal here where you look down a you know take a light and check it but it's best if you can use uh, tools or instruments to determine that so given that this is square the stumble is square and the uh, the uh, airway is straight that means that if we can get the outside of this down to the proper size, it ought to fit flush without a light gap around the uh, edge of it here. Now, how I would do this on my own without uh, uh, doing the video, if I weren't trying to show you how to do this at home, so to speak, would be to chuck this up in my uh, uh, drill press that's got that XY table and all the micro adjustment and just recut it from top down. It's capable of that level of precision. You just get the, the, um, the center hole lined up and tune the little cutter and spin it and run it down and, and you're done. So, but that's a rare situation. Uh, I don't know of anybody else with a similar setup and if there were it wouldn't be but a handful of people whereas anybody can do what I'm about to show you here. And that is the right technique for using strips of sandpaper. Uh, I just noticed the uh, timer on the camera is uh, ticking down here and to keep these of a reasonable length I'm going to call where we what we just covered as the the layout or the assessment and then stop it restart it for part two where I actually get into doing some work uh, keep the size of these videos manageable so I'll be back in a minute and we'll actually take this thing down to size <clears throat> 